So we covered the, uh, the, this, the distal part, the distal part of the tib fib. Um, so we're already familiar with this part of the extremity. You've got the uh, lateral malleolus, the medial malleolus. Now there's an area over here, I don't think I did cover it on, on the last, um, last week, but there is going to be a smooth surface or an indentation of the, the tibial bone in which the distal fibula articulates with. So there is going to be a notch on the tibia. And so this area here is going to be known as the distal tibiotellar joint. Tibiofibular joint, the distal tibiofibular joint. And then we make our way up, it also has a proximal uh, tibiofibular joint. So you have a proximal and then you also have a distal. So you have grooves or, or notches in the tibia to accommodate um, the areas of the, uh, the fibula. All right. Um, the length of the fibula is the body, right? The length of the tibia is also a body. What's interesting here is you have a very sharp edge that's anterior to the tibia, and that's known as the crest. What do we know the crest by? Shin, shin, the shin bone. It's your shin bone, okay? So that's in your anterior crest. <clears throat> Again, making our, our, our movement up, you have the tibial tuberosity. It is a bony projection, very, very uh, rough surface. And you have a ligament attached to that that communicates with the patella. Okay, so that's your tibial tuberosity. Uh, staying with the tibia, you got two uh, bony projections, again, that extend laterally and medially. Those are your condyles. Now, those also will have very rough surfaces for more ligament attachments. When we uh, when we uh, discuss the knee, you will we will uh, I'll show you those attachments. Um, now, if you guys recall, condyles are directly related to a joint. Remember, we talked about condyles and epicondyles. Okay, condyles are di directly related to a joint. They are related to the joint. Epicondyles are not. All right, um, the very top of the tibia, you have a smooth surface up there. Uh, this is known as your tibial plateau. I don't know if I have a better image of that. Okay, tibial plateau on the very top of the tibia. And the plateau is, they're smooth surfaces. So on each side, on top of the condyles, on top of the condyles, okay, on the top surface, they're smooth, okay? There's also a groove there, and what do you think is gonna sit on top of those grooves? The femur? The femur, okay? So the femur is gonna sit right on top of the condyles. The plateau, again, especially, is a smooth surface. All right. Um, I think I covered everything on this page. Oh, on the very top, on the very top. So on either side of the tibia, you have smooth surfaces, but on the very middle, you have the intercondyloid eminences, also known as tubercles. Very, again, rough surface. Anytime you have a rough surface, there's gonna be some sort of attachment there, right? That's gonna be the attachment for your ACL and your PCL. Have you ever heard of those terms before? Mm -hmm. Okay, your anterior uh, cruciate ligament and your posterior, lig uh, posterior cruciate ligaments are gonna attach to those surfaces. And that's the eminence. All right. Here we have a lateral, lateral image of the tip fib. Um, the apex of the fibula is at the very top. It also has a head and a neck. We already talked about the body. Uh, what I want to focus on here is the tibial plateau, okay, the very top of the tibia, the smooth surface. It has an angulation from a true 90 degree of approximately 10 to 20 degrees posteriorly, okay? So when you keep that in mind, okay, there's this angulation right here. This is going to be your joint space between your tibia and your femur. Okay, remember the femur is going to sit right on top of that. 
because there's an angulation of between 10 to 20 degrees, what do you think we need to do with our x-ray tube to open up that joint space? Angle it. Okay. 10 to 20 degrees, which way? Towards the feet. Okay, so caudally. Okay, so 10 to 20 degrees caudally. So keep that in mind when we talk about positioning. All right? And then you can also see here that the, uh, the fibular malleolus is more posterior and also inferior to the tibia. All right, so distal femur and the patella. Here is the bottom. Here is the bottom or the inferior view of your femur. You have a medial epicondyle and a medial condyle. Lateral, you have a lateral epicondyle and a lateral condyle. These condyles, the condyles of the femur is what's going to articulate with the condyles of which bone? Tibia. The tibia. Okay? So the uh, the femoral surface is going to articulate with the tibial surface. The bottom of the femur has epicondyles, more projections that extend from the condyles, and those are not involved in the joint. It's only the condyles that are involved in the joint. All right. Um, <clears throat> Talk about the movement of the patella. When your knee bends, naturally what's going to happen is the patella is going to be drawn downward. Not only is it going to be drawn downward, but it's going to pull it closer also to the femur, okay, closing up the joint. So when you bend your, when you bend your leg, the patella is going to move downward and also move towards closer towards the femur. When we're taking uh, x-rays of the knee, there is a limitation to how much the leg should bend. We want to keep it open, because also when you have the knee fully extended, the joint space between the patella and the femur can also close up. So we got to bend the knee slightly to open up the joint between the two bones. And if you do it too much, it's going to draw it closer to the femur, and now you can't see the joint space either. Okay, so there's generally about a, a 20 degree bend on the knee for proper lateral, lateral knee that we'll talk about later on. Um, the back side of the femur is known as the popliteal surface. The front side of the distal femur has a patellar surface that articulates with the uh, patellar bone. Uh, the patella is going to be, we already talked about sesamoid bones, right? Okay, usually associated with the joint. It aids with the movement and articulation, and the largest sesamoid bone that is found in our body is the patella. Okay. The joint space between the patella and the femur, that joint is uh, called the patellofemoral joint. The patellofemoral joint. And the patellar surface has a groove, okay? It's either called the intercondylar sulcus or the trochlear groove. They all, all the names are <coughs> analogous. They're the same. So the patellar surface, intercondylar sulcus, and the trochlear groove, they all mean the same thing. So this is the anterior surface. This is the posterior surface. Notice there's a groove here, a very huge indentation, or a fossa. This is known as the intercondylar fossa, or the notch. Now that opening is a tunnel that allows passage for your ACL and your PCL. It allows passage for your ACL and your PCL. Any questions so far? No questions, okay. Let's talk about the anatomy of the patella. 
This is where it gets a little bit confusing because the apex is usually on the top and the base is on the bottom, right? In this case, and it looks like a guitar pick, the very top is the base. And where it points is the apex. So, so the base is going to be towards the head, the apex is going to be towards the bottom. You have two surfaces. You have an anterior surface and you have a posterior surface. The posterior surface is going to be smooth. It needs to be smooth because with your leg extending and bending, there shouldn't be any friction between the patella and the femur. Now the front is going to be rough. Okay, anytime you have a rough surface, what are we thinking about there? Attachment. There's going to be some sort of attachment. Okay. So this is where one of the uh, ligaments is going to attach. It's going to attach to the patella. And then remember that tibial tuberosity, the other end is going to attach to the tibia. All right, any questions so far? That's all we need to know about the patella, base apex. Anterior surface rough, posterior surface smooth. <laughs> so here we have the knee joint. We're, we're, how we're looking at this is we're looking at it th through the back side. Um, the femoral tibial and the patellofemoral joints is what forms the knee joint. So the joint is formed by the femur and the tibia and the patella and the femur. The fibula is not part of the knee joint. You guys need to write that down there somewhere, okay? The fibula is not part of the knee joint because it's not involved in any of the articulation. Now remember the intercondyloid fossa we were talking about of the femur, that tunnel? This is where the ACL and the PCL are going to pass through your anterior cruciate ligament and your posterior cruciate ligament. Now there are other uh, ligaments. We talked about two or four. The other one are going to be your collateral ligaments. You have your fibular collateral and then you have your tibial collateral or your lateral collateral or medial collateral. So, so the whole purpose of the ligaments is one, your cruciates control flexing and extension, okay? And it prevents any type of hyperflexion or hyperextension. Same thing with the collaterals. The collaterals are located on the side of the knee joint, so it prevents any type of side movement, keeping the knee stable, okay? So the cruciate prevents anterior and posterior movement, Collateral prevents any type of abduction or adduction of the joint. <coughs> All those four ligaments controls and stabilizes your, your knee joint. look of the knee joint. We, we talked about the ligaments, but what I want to mention here now is the meniscus. The meniscus. The meniscus are dish-shaped structures that are located between the tibia and the fibula, and they act as shock absorbers. Very similar to that of the disc found in your vertebrae, so it acts as shock absorbers. Now, is it possible to rupture those discs? Okay. Yes, the meniscus, you ever hear of that? I have a torn meniscus, or I injured my meniscus. Meniscus injury generally happens with those uh, individuals who are involved in some type of sports where there's a lot of stopping, okay, and sideways, sideways movement. So you have football players, gymnasts, uh, of those type of tennis players are generally the ones who injure their meniscus. Okay, sudden, sudden stops um, in um, 
puts a lot of tension and pressure on, on the, uh, the disc. But we also hear about those who, who tear their ACL. ACL is generally the um, a career ending, ending injury to uh, athletes. Okay, because no, when you tear your, your any of those ligaments, your knee is no longer stable and you're kind of a liability to, to the team. Um, when I was 15, I was horsing around and I'm not gonna say exactly what I was doing, <laughs> but I was horsing around and my, my knee or my leg hyperextended so it bent the other way. So basically, my, my leg hit me in the face because it bent the other way. It went boom, it hit me in the face and then popped back into, into the joint. I was, uh, I was in rolling and thriving in a lot of pain and I was grabbing my leg and I couldn't feel my patella. My patella was all the way on the back side. Yeah. So I essentially tore up my ACL, but I'm not an athlete, so it doesn't matter. But I tore it up and I had to go into emergency surgery that day. So I remember going into uh, urgent care, getting checked, uh, talking with the nurses, and next thing I know I, I woke up in the same room. I don't even remember going to surgery, and I was happy. <laughs> happy drugs. But yeah, it took me a long time to, uh, to heal from that injury. Almost, almost about, I think almost a year. But it was perfect because I had the, I had the, like the best gig. So I was still in high school, and so I had to walk around in crutches. So who do you think was carrying my books around? That's right. <laughs> and I faked it out for a while after that. Even after I was okay, I was still faking it out a little bit. <laughs> All right. So the joint, okay, I wrote down here the, so the joint, it is a synovial joint, meaning that it has a synovial sac that allows, that allows for uh, lubrication and free movement of that joint, okay? So it is a synovial membrane lubricate, which lubricates the joint, and the distal femur and the proximal tibia is gonna be covered with a slick hyaline cartilage to ease in the movement or prevent any type of friction in any of the movement, okay? Do we have any questions on this page? Okay, and then the articular capsule, we're talking about the uh, bursa. The, the capsule contains the synovial fluid, again, that uh, assists in, in movement of the knee joint. Uh, when we are doing an, an arthrogram, arthrograms are generally performed with uh, synovial joint spaces. So we're talking about the shoulder, the hip, the knee. Did we talk about that, taking synovial fluid mm -hmm. out and injecting it with contrast? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is an example of an arthrogram. What you're seeing here is the contrast filling up the, the bursa of, of the knee. And once we fill that up with contrast, we, we take x-rays in different positions, whether it's done by the radiologist or by yourself. Um, we are evaluating that space. Also, what can happen is, in addition to taking normal x-rays, we'll keep the contrast in there and then we'll send, send them to the CT department for additional views. So the contrast is like the outline portion? Yeah, so what we're looking at here is, this is contrast right here, and then right behind that are the fat pads. Remember fat is, is a, a little bit more gray or dark, so you're not gonna see that radiographically, but the contrast is outlining that, uh, that area. All right, um, more views. Uh, we're gonna talk about, we'll, we'll be talking more about the, the, the intercondylar fossa here in just a moment. All right, so anatomy and review. You guys like doing this stuff? Okay, what's, uh, what's, what's A on your left? That's the medial epicon or? Okay. Remember the tibia doesn't have epicondyle. I mean, condyle. Okay, so it's a condyle. Okay, so I have the medial condyle for A. B is the crest or the shaft. Crest, shaft. Okay, body. C. Medial malleolus. Medial malleolus. D. Lateral malleolus. Lateral malleolus. E. Shaft of fibula. Shaft. 
neck, neck, head, head, proximal tibial fibular joint. Uh, is it pointing to the bone? Uh, apex. No, it's the apex. It's the apex, apex of oh. the fibula. Okay, so what is the joint called between the fibula and tibia here? It's the proximal tibial fibula. Proximal tibial fibula. And then here we have the distal, distal tibial fibula. Okay. <coughs> Uh, H-I-I? -I. Lateral condyle. Lateral condyle. Okay, not epicondyle, lateral condyle. And then on the very top, J? Intercondylar eminence. Okay, your eminences. Your eminences, okay. Now, A on the lateral. It's the same thing as J on this right, so. It's eminence. It's your eminence. B. Is that bony projection, rough surface, tuberosity, tibial tuberosity, tibial tuberosity, C, shaft, C and DR, your Shafts. body should do shaft, and then F, which is lower, lateral, lateral or fibular malleolus, and then mm -hmm. E, is that the joint? Mm -hmm. okay. it's, a, it's referring to the other malleolus, uh, I think. It's the um, Tibial, okay. All right. Start here on the, so what we have here is we have two different projections of the knee. Here is a, an AP, a true AP of the knee with an angulation to open up the joint space. If we did it perpendicularly, this joint space will be closed, but we'll talk about the nuances here in just a moment. So this is an AP knee. Uh, A. Eminence. Eminence. B. He, okay. medial we, we know what C is, right? What's C? Condyle. C is the femoral condyle, so then right above that should be? Epicondyle. Okay, the femoral epicondyle. B, C, D. Medial condyle. Okay, that's the, okay. Is it medial or lateral? Lateral. 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 That's lateral, because of the fibula. Because yeah. of the fibula. See, you guys are good. You know what's funny, too, is I've been listening to you guys talk in class now, and two months ago, because I'm hearing superimposition, okay, lateral, medial. When you guys are talking, you guys are talking using medical terminology now instead of plain English, which is, which is amazing to me. Because if you tape recorded yourself and you heard the way you guys were talking, you guys are talking like technologists now. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but we got, but you guys remember a few months ago you guys couldn't you guys were confusing A P P A like what? What you talking about? Yeah, talking those, gibberish, that, bro. yeah, those, those are basic basic terms that you guys were like In front. I don't get this. <laughs> and now you guys get it, right? Dorsal, plantar, anterior, posterior, medial. Oh they proximal. get that one now after yeah. the test. Yeah, right. <laughs> Superimposition. You guys are using you guys are using medical language. I love it. Okay. So we said this was what? Lateral. Lateral. Epicondyle. Okay. Not epi. Sorry, condyle. <laughs> okay. Lateral condyle. So condyles for the tibia. Uh, the um, the fem uh, femur has condyles and, and epicondyles. Okay, but the tibia does not. Okay, so C D E. Smooth surfaces. Tibial plateau. Okay. Tibial plateau. So this is going to be your tibial plateau. F. Medial condyle. Medial condyle. <laughs> G. Medial, Medial condyle, condyle of the femur. The femur, okay. E, F, G, H. Right above Medial it. Medial epicondyle. Epicondyles. And then this. Patella. Okay, that's your guitar pick. Did someone say talus? No. Nope. Am I hearing things? What did you guys say? Patella. Patella, okay. Lateral view, A. Okay, what part of the patella? The base. The base. B. Apex. Apex. The, let's talk, uh, C. Tuberosity. Tuberosity. D. The neck of the fibula. Okay, so we have the neck. The head. The head. The apex. apex. Okay, E, F, G. Is that the popliteal surface, or? That's a little bit lower, so let's call that the. What does your book say? Does it say condyle or epicondyle? Condyle. It says condyles? Okay, so condyles. 
Now, when we're looking at the lateral, here's another, here's another um, anatomical um, I can't think right now. Okay, I'm going to back up a little bit here. In the femur, okay, you got two condyles. You have a medial and you have a lateral. The medial condyle, just like in, just like in the ankle where the, uh, the fibula is going to be lower than the tibia, the condyles, the medial condyle is going to be lower than the lateral condyle. Okay, the medial condyle is going to be lower than the lateral condyle. So if we, so if we took an x-ray perpendicularly, you're going to see two separate condyles. But we're only seeing one here, right? We're only seeing one because one is superimposed over the other. Okay? So when we're doing a true lateral, we're also going to be using a tube angulation to superimpose those condyles. So we'll talk about that later. Okay, this is what it looks like here. So this, this is a lateral knee in which we use a perpendicular beam straight on. So the one that's going to be lower is going to be your medial. The one that's superior is going to be, it's going to be the lateral, right? K, medial, J, lateral. So a true AP with a tube angulation is going to superimpose the two condyles. So this is a very good lateral knee. This is not. Did you say true AP or lateral? What did I say, true AP? Uh -huh. True lateral. Okay. Sorry, true lateral. I is going to be the abductor tubercle, again, where there's going to be another ligament attachment there. So that's your abductor, abductor tubercle. This particular view on your left is a special projection that we use to isolate, that we use to isolate the patella. This is known as the sunrise view or the tangential projection. We will be practicing that in class. So A would be what structure? Patella. Your patella and the space between that and your femur, B. The patello. Patello sir. Femoral joint or femoral patellar joint. D is going to be the part, uh, partellar surface or the intercondylar sulcus. So the patellar surface is part of the femur, right? The patellar surface is part of the femur, okay. yes. The patellar surface is part of the femur. And then you have your two condyles. E is medial, C is your lateral. Covering what we talked about earlier, so here we have an anterior, uh, an anterior view of the femur. In a true anatomical position, your femur isn't straight up and down. In fact, there's an angulation, a medial angulation of approximately five to fifteen degrees, okay, from the perpendicular. So it is angled about five to fifteen degrees. So what that means is, because of this angulation, it's going to cause a <coughs> tilt where the epicondyles are located. So this tilt is also going to cause a tilt down here at the knee joint. So it's also going to have a 5 to 15 degree angulation of that joint space. So to open up the joint space in a true lateral, what do we have to do? Angle it. Angle it which way? Where are we going to angle it? Okay, we're going to open, yeah, so because this is true perpendicular, I mean true flat, and it's angled this way. So to open it up, we're going to angle 15 to, uh, 5 to 15 degrees towards the feet. So is it the reason one of the condyle is newer than the other? Right, one? exactly. Because of the angulation problem. Exactly. Yes. Yep. Okay. All right. 
So the femur is going to be the longest and the strongest bone. The patella is one and a half inches above the joint. So when we're taking knee x-rays, we're looking at the knee joint, we, the, the landmark that we're going to feel here is the patella. So we feel for the patella and we're going to go about half an inch below that and that will take you right in the center of that knee joint because of the patella location. So when we're doing the knee, we're going to be feeling the bony landmarks that you'll be feeling are the, uh, the condyles and epicondyles and then the patella. Okay, so 5 to 7 degree angle is shown at distal, medial, and lateral condyles, like so. So to open that joint space up, we're also going to apply a 5 to 7 degree cephalic angle for a medial lateral projection. For medial lateral, because we have two different types of projection. You have medial lateral and you have lateral medial, so it depends on which way the x-ray tube is, is going. So for medial lateral projection, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a five to seven degree cephalic angle. And then lateral medial would be a uh, cotted the other angle. Way. Yes. Be a cotted angle, yes. right? So it'll be the other way. Yeah, because okay, when we're doing a okay, I know it's confusing. We're going to be when we're taking an X-ray of the knee, lateral. We do it. Here I go again. We're going to do it like this which is medial lateral, okay? Not like this, but like this, all right? Because we're approaching it this way. It's not going the other direction. Okay, medial to lateral, it has to be a cephalic angle. All right, let's talk about, let's discuss now the uh, projections of the lower leg. <coughs> So here we have an A 